This is a video for how to go about creating a dimension drawing for number 19 of your 20 ISOs project in Fusion 360. Notice we have number 19 loaded. We will go to Design, we will go to Drawing, and we'll go to From Design. We have our PLTW title block. We'll go ahead and say OK. Now we're going to go ahead and place our front view. We're going to go up to a 1 to 3 scale. So I'm going to go up to 1 to 3, and I'm going to place a front view, and I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go to Projected, click on the front view, Go to the top, side, isometric view. We'll make our ISO a shaded view by double clicking on the view, going to shaded and saying close. Now I want you to notice that the hole here that goes through the object is technically going to be counted as two arcs in the drawing because we see an arc here and we see an arc back here. They're on different planes. So it cuts through this plane and then cuts through this back plane separately. And in the drawing, it's going to come up as two arcs, but we're going to call that a diameter. And I'm going to show you how to change a radius to a diameter. So to start, let's grab a hold of center mark and let's click on the outside of both of our arcs. And you're going to notice it doesn't give us that full view scope kind of center mark because it's seeing two radius dimensions for two arcs. We'll come up to center line. We'll go between our two hidden lines here. We'll go between these two hidden lines, and that's our center lines to show where that hole cuts through. Now, when we go to dimension, I want to dimension uh, this hole here, but it's going to say that there's two separate arcs to give radius dimensions to. We're going to click on this radius, and we're going to drag out here to the left and place it. We're going to right-click and say OK. Now, I want to change this to a diameter dimension. So we're going to double click on this and highlight radius 2 and we're going to go to our insert symbol and we're going to put a diameter symbol on top of it. Now for some reason it wanted to mess with me there a little bit so I'm going to come up here and go down to diameter. Let's go to diameter and I'm going to say 4. Sometimes you have to kind of move the the arrow back and forth. So sometimes I might have to come over to the left hand side and click, come over to the right hand side and click. Now it's going to let me go 4.00. You kind of got to move your mouse around a little bit. Sometimes it'll kind of get out. You go back into it and change it. So that is a diameter of 4. Since this is a hole that we drilled in off that front plane and we didn't cut two arcs, I want to keep this in as a diameter of 4. Again, what Fusion 360 sees those radius dimensions because there's two arcs. But we're going to go ahead and change that to 4. So let's go ahead and do our width dimensions. Now there's two width dimensions we'll place in the front view and we're going to place the dimensions that we could actually see that are on our front plane here. And we're going to go for three to he from here to here and we're going to place the full width of the object in the front view as well. Now in the top view we want to show the location dimension of from here to here but we don't want to place that underneath unless we otherwise cannot avoid it. And in this case we can do that without going underneath the front view and we'll place that 7 on the top view. You should be able to note that when we look at this that the we should be able to note that you know this point down here would line up with this line to tell us what the points would we'd have to create to draw this diagonal line. So depth dimensions. Now in our top view, normally in a lot of other videos I've placed depth dimensions in the top view, but I'm trying to avoid creating an extension line that comes out that makes it look like this is a surface in this area. So in that sense, I'm going to come over here to my side view and I'm going to place two depth dimensions. So I'm going to have a four depth and a two depth. Again, I'm going to show you why I chose not to do that in my top view. Because if I drag this out, it kind of makes that look like it's a surface. And that can wind up being just a little bit confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this two and say OK. Now we have some height dimensions to do. And we really only have two height dimensions to go about doing. Um, the full height of the object we can go ahead and place here in the front view and then we have to find the height dimension location dimension of the center of this hole so in our side view we could go from here to here and drag out and we can tell this center line only stays back here so far now we could kind of drag that out but technically in this case you know it only is showing the cut in the back we'll go ahead and leave this so we can tell in the side view the location dimension of the height of the hole now over here in the front view we don't we did not put the width of the location dimension of the hole or up here in the top view let's go ahead and choose to place that in the top view so i missed one location dimension while we were going through forgot to place that in so let's drag the 7 down and we need the width location of the location dimension in the front view so let's come up here and grab a hold of dimension I'm going to click and drag over here to the side I'm going to drag down to 4 I'm going to right click and say OK 
So I'm going to kind of drag this up a little bit, give it a little bit more space. We know it's four up from the bottom, four in from the left. We know the diameter of our hole to be created. So I come down here and I click on I click on fit all and we can see that we have all the dimensions we need to make this part. Remember again, the point of dimensioning is accurately and communicating all measurements of a part without being redundant without going to hidden lines and to clearly communicate everything. Theoretically speaking, when you're done dimensioning object, you should look at it and say, I could hand this off to a manufacturer and they could make this part perfectly from the drawing that I gave them. So let's go up and click save. And this is number 19 and we'll say save and we'll see it update over here in our project browser. And this has been a video on how to create a dimension drawing of number 19 from your 20 ISOs project in Fusion 360.